You ever walk into a bathroom after some of your shit? It fucking bothers you. You look at them like you dirty fucking bitch. Light a candle. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my face. The plot of Frozen 3 is about someone who sadly, tragically dies because their bowel vagina got diseased. I thought Frozen was about snowmen and a, a nice uh, uh, castle princess queen thing. But it's not. It's about someone's bowel being made into a vagina. I don't think it's funny. That children who go to see, who is it, Olaf? The snowman have to sit through a two-hour movie about a vagina being made out of someone's bowel because they don't have penile Jesus. tissue because their puberty was blocked at a young age. This is the... I'm not lying. You can be whatever you want to be. But if you don't have enough penal tissue because we blocked your puberty, <laughs> we're going to use your bowel. That's the thing that you use to go to the bathroom. And we're going to make a vagina, but it might get sick. That, that's one of the songs. And by the way, I don't even think that as a song, I don't think that's well written. I don't think that's well written. I'm a, I'm a fan of alliteration and metaphor. And it's, that's very direct. And it's unfortunate. In a few, now this is a fair question. Don't get mad at me. The question is, in a few years, are we going to be better at bowel vagina surgeries? Yes or no? Are we going to be better at making a vagina out of someone's bowel? I hope we are. Literally, not kidding, no joke. I genuinely hope getting a vagina in a few years is like nothing. It's like, remember the dentist? It was kind of annoying. That's what I hope it is. I don't want anybody dying. If you want a vagina... They should be able to give you a fucking puss, and it should be quick. It is going to be, what, what will it be at that point? 20, 20, 30, 25, 20, 27, 20, 30. In 2030, if you're dying because they can't put a puss on you, we got a problem. So they need to figure this out without people getting necrotizing for shitis. What if Disney had a ride called Bow Vagina the Ride? where kids could see, because here's the deal. This, it's, it, some of this is a little freaky, but some of it's cool. Some of it's cool that you can make a pussy out of a lot of stuff. I think it's going to be like how a bill becomes a law. Remember that? If this is how a bill becomes a law. I think it's going to have to be like, this is how a pussy becomes a pussy. And they're going to have to talk about it because I don't want people dying. This is fucking horrible. America... Figure out how to make a better pussy. The pussy, you got to get a better pussy program for the kids. Got to get a better pussy program for the kids. I do not want my son's pussy infected. <laughs> I do not want my son's pussy infected. And if you can't give my son the pussy of his dreams, if you can't give my son, listen to me, medical community, Fauci. <laughs> If you can't give my son a pussy he's proud of, then I don't, if I can't look at my son's pussy without feeling a little bit of pride, I don't want to deal, I don't want to be involved. I don't want to be involved because that's sick. That's sick. If you give my son a pussy that's gross and green and diseased, I'm going to be mad as a father, as a dad, as a gay dad who adopted a son who wants a <laughs> pussy. He comes home and he goes, I got a puss. And we're like, great. And then he's like, here it is. And we're all looking at his pussy uh, at Christmas. And his sister's like, oh my God, that's gross. Put it away. And I'm like, shut up. He accomplished that. And then I look at it and I'm like, the lips are green. <laughs> I used to, you know, before I decided I, I, I wanted cogs in my mouth, I used to fuck around with the ladies and I never saw a green puss. <laughs> I saw some flaps I didn't love down there, but I never saw a green puss. <laughs> Can you trust your old man here? I'm like, whatever. And then in two days, he wakes up, and it's worse. It's bad. And I'm like, I told you, and now my son's pussy <laughs> is being ravaged by necrotizing fasciitis. My son's vagina that I paid for, and he's proud of, and we love. We love it. My son's pussy.
Folks, I know people might be offended by this. What I'm trying to say is that I want better pussies. I want better pussies for the, for the, and I want better cocks for the ladies that want cocks. If you want, I want a hard, thick cock for my daughter. If my daughter, I want a, I want a beautiful, eight is a little too much, but a seven, like a seven, seven and a half, a uh, nice big cock that's perfectly pink and thick and round with two nice balls. I want that for my daughter. And if they don't know how to make a cock for my daughter, if my daughter comes home with a rotten cock, <laughs> the shooter was not confronted before entry, and it appears he walked into the school through an unlocked door. We got to lock the doors. That seems obvious to everyone involved. The doors of a school have to be locked. You know, I showed up at my old school. I was with a friend. This was years ago. And I was, you know, I thought I'd do like a little homecoming. Like, hey, this is where I went to school. I thought I could walk down. I had no idea. And this was years ago. I had no idea how, like, how shut down these schools were. It was all locked. I knocked on the door. They were like, hello, excuse me. And through the glass, I was like, yeah, I went to school here. Uh, yeah. I'm Tim Dillon. Yeah. I was on Joe Rogan. We talked about Bill Gates. And they they looked at me like, the guy looked at me like I was crazy showing up at a school. And now, you know, upon further reflection, I now, I get it. It's, it does seem crazy. Do you think, uh, though, because the locked door is inevitably someone will get in. You think at some point what we need to do is have decoy schools like Saddam Hussein palaces. Very interesting. Where the, where the students are in a decoy school. <laughs> right. And then we have doubles in the other school. Right. But it's going to get out which school is which. Well, then you got to you got to keep moving. Like, What about off. if we educated kids underground? Underground would be like good. Like underground. Absolutely. We have underground cities. We have underground military bunkers. Right. The kids don't need sunlight. Uh, they can certainly underground. We can recreate the conditions of UV light. Or the military industrial complex will make a clip out of this. Yeah. Everyone arm up and don't leave. Right. And just let delivery people deal with it. Yes. Delivery people are the only brave ones now. Yeah. I mean, I was talking about that today. Somebody <laughs> on Instacart delivered me two candles. They had to take that long walk. <laughs> From the door to the wall to their car in the Walgreens parking lot, depending on the time of day in Los Angeles, that ain't nothing. That's nothing. No. You have no idea what could happen on your way. I guarantee you, an Instacart or Postmates worker on the way to the car has met their end. Yeah, or release a new virus yeah. for our own safety to get us back indoors. You just see a burrito fall to the floor yeah. and then blood. Yeah, because that people that leave their houses now really are the the, the most brave. Yeah. And it's going to be... <laughs> it's the most brave people. They're the most brave people. They're, out, they're outside. Teachers maybe are more brave than cops now. I mean, teachers teaching might be a more deadly job than police. Because why didn't they have guns? Yeah. I'm not even kidding. Like, why did they not have guns in Texas? Like, is this all the gunman's fault? Or can we lay a little bit of blame on the teachers who weren't carrying? These cucks moving from California. That's, that's what it are, is. Yeah. It's you have a bunch of liberal teachers moving from California yeah. that don't have guns yeah. and aren't focused on the defense of the school. Well, you need body armor because the guy's going to come. If he's got a bigger gun, he's prepared. He's got, right. the guy, I watch a lot of self-defense videos. Right. The perp always has the advantage. Right. Because he's the one that comes in and goes, we're doing this. Right. And you have to go, oh shit, we're doing this. Because you, he, he has the element of surprise the element of surprise and he may have an ar-15 those things are pretty efficient they do their job so what we need is what well, let's let's plan this out we one student at the, we need one teacher at the chalkboard handgun maybe ready in the one hand then we need another teacher so you're saying just a teacher pretty much all day <laughs> At the at the at the ready. Well, you don't know if the kids got a gun, so you got to have one. Whoa, you makes gotta have sense. a gun facing the kids. That's right. And then you have to have someone watching your blind spot. So we need another teacher, a teacher's aide, if you will. With teacher's aide. So they don't even need to watching be teachers. the door. We just need two armed people in each classroom. One watching the door, one watching the windows. <laughs> AR 15s drawn. Right. Right. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. No. So we have two. We have two people in the classroom. They each have an AR-15 out, yeah. and it'll look, and it's just kind of fun way to quiet the kids down too. Yeah. Quiet down. It's nap time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now the kids themselves may be armed because it's their right. Yes, but, but as right. long as long as you have an AR-15, you have the advantage because their little hands can't quite grasp 
or deal with the pushback of an AR-15. Right. Yeah. yeah, and you can take a few of them out if you need to If you need once. to, you'll get a few. So if you have a few people in each classroom with AR-15s, one trained on the kids, one on the door of the classroom. And one on the teacher, because you don't know what they're going through. Oh, it's a great point, because yeah, the need, teacher might flip out. So you need uh, you need one kid marshal yes. in the class. So a kid marshal with a gun. Yeah. <laughs> Who has a gun on the teacher? You need two teacher's aides with AR 15s, one at the door, one at the class. Yes. Yes. Interesting. Yes. It's not a bad idea. And you need school uniforms, and those uniforms are body, body armor. armor. Kevlar body armor uniforms. Yes. AR-15 at the kids, AR-15 at the teacher, AR-15 at the door. Problem solved. Not a big deal. Not a tough way to live at all. It's fine. Otherwise, we're going to be just relying on what we're relying on now, which I guess is chance, happenstance, luck. Yeah. Yeah, because now it seems like a casino a little bit if you send your kids to school. Yeah, no, I it's would- It's a little bit of a casino. Even in supermarkets, uh, I would yes. feel a lot safer. Yes, armed, I guards. would feel a lot safer if the army was there while I got lettuce. If the, if the, if the military could potentially enforce a barrier around the supermarket and check people as they went in- Yeah. We need military checkpoints at I, Safeway. I don't think it's a bad idea. I don't think so at all. To put the military outside supermarkets. I don't think so at all. Your children are going to have cocks and pussies for Christmas. You're not going to win. You're probably not going to win. I don't know. I think I think it's a little wacky too. I think adults should be able to do what they want. But you, it's just what it's going to. You're going to be getting your kids cocks and pussies for Christmas. There's no way around it. In ten years. You're going to be giving your daughter a, a, a realistic cock, and she's going to open it and go, thank you. And you're going to go, tomorrow we go down to the clinic and get it sewed on. And she's going to be happy because this is what it's going to be. And I want the best for my kids. So I want my daughter to have a big, thick cock. If my son wants a pussy, I want him to have a good one. I want it to be wet. I want it to be wet. I want my son to have a wet pussy. I want, I want that. You think I want my son to have some, dry, like, a dry puss? A dry pussy? I want my son's pussy to be so wet that when he gets up from the chair on Christmas dinner, he leaves a trail. Like a snail. Like a snail. But this is what I mean about risks we take in life. I ate raw cookie dough. Someone gets a puss. But it shouldn't be a risk. You should be able to transition in a healthy way, and it should be cost-effective. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be hard. And your family should be involved. Your family should be involved in your... Tra like, you, you know what I mean? Why wouldn't, if you got a new pussy, you not show it? Like, there was me and this kid, Dan. We were on the road for a while, and we used to say this stuff all the time, and it was really fun, and we used to say... We used to say the sentence where we go, don't be too embarrassed to ask your son to see his pussy. And this was, we said, that's going to be the quote of like 2021. Don't be too embarrassed to ask your son to see his new pussy. And that's what I think, the, that's the advice I give to fathers. That's the advice I give to fathers right now. You know your son has a pussy. And you know he's proud of it. Ask to see it. Ask to see it. You're not going to be aroused. You're not sick. You're not a sicko. You just want to make sure that they did the right thing by your son. Because you took him in. And they're, you know, giving him a puss so he can become your daughter. And you're like, I'm cool with all that. I'm fine with all that. They go, hey, guys, guys, I'm good with that. I don't care. By the way, I wouldn't care. A lot of people don't care. If your son becomes a daughter, your daughter becomes a son. Some people care. But you want them to be healthy and happy and have the best private parts they can have. That can't be controversial. It can't be controversial to say, I want my transgender son or daughter to have the best fake private parts they can have. And I'll pay for it. I've got money. I've got money to buy a cock for my daughter. But it's got to be good. It can't kill her. Your pussy killed my son. <laughs> How many people are going to have to run into a, a medical facility and go, Your pussy killed my son. That's going to be the new Braveheart. 
an after party. It's fun for the entire family. Bring the kids. Get them involved in cryptocurrency. Liquidate their college funds and buy the coin. The hell with your sick mother. Take her out of the nursing home. Get her cash and buy the coin. Go to b.tc slash conference to check out the event. Purchase your ticket and be sure to use my promo code Tim Dillon, T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. T-I-M-D-I-L-L-O-N. There is nothing in the world more important than buying Bitcoin. Not your kids, not their schooling, not your sick fucking relatives, not your stupid wife with that fucking titty cancer. What you need is more Bitcoin. Who cares that some of the people in your family can't eat? They'll eat soon and they'll eat the coin. Bitcoin is the most important thing in the world. It'll never drop and even when it does it just means it'll go higher it's going to a million that's what the Winklevoss has said listen to the Winklevi if your wife starts in you grab her don't hit her but grab her forcefully and let her know that you're a man and say I put our money in Bitcoin because of the Winklevi Come learn about Bitcoin and celebrate life and freedom of the Bitcoin 2021 <laughs> conference. Bring the kids. Bring the family if you can afford to. If not, leave them somewhere. Leave them at a rest stop and come and learn about the future of money. It's b.tc forward slash conference and use the code Tim Dillon for 10% off. And this is somebody trying to make them get the vaccine. During the pandemic, my lifestyle drastically changed. My income came to a screeching halt. You have to understand, I'm a hustler. I'm a legit entrepreneur. I sell things. I come in contact with people all the time. I have to stay safe. I didn't have a choice now, but to trust the back. Why does this seem racist? <laughs> do you understand what I mean? Why do I start to cringe when he's like, I'm a hustler. I sell things. What are we doing here? Who in Arkansas thought this was a good idea? I'm a hustler. I sell things. I'm not going to say what I sell. It's not my, it's not your business. I make shit happen. I know a guy. It's like, why are we, what is this? What is going on here? First of all, it's also a bad idea because if you're not a hustler or an entrepreneur, you go, I don't need it. Right. You're, you're trying to like broaden the scope of people you want to get it. What if there's a guy who goes, I'm not an entrepreneur at all. I work at Little Caesars. I don't need it. But it seems racist, and I don't know why, but let's finish it up. All right, let's start it over because it, it's insane. During the pandemic, my lifestyle drastically changed. My income came to a screeching halt. You have to understand, I'm a hustler. I'm a legit entrepreneur. By the way, go back. Sell- what car is he? An old Ford Mustang. It's an old Ford Mustang. Now, he's outside of a building. We don't know where, we don't know what that building is. T-R-O-I-S. That's the end of the bit. We don't know. But he's just posted up on an old Ford Mustang in a parking lot being an entrepreneur. He's not at a desk. He's not in an office. They didn't put him in an office. The state of Arkansas did not put him in an office. They didn't put him in a suit. They didn't put him anywhere near a place of business. He's in a parking lot on a Ford Mustang giving you advice about the vaccine. Continue. During the pandemic, my lifestyle drastically changed. My income came to a screeching halt. You have to understand, I'm a hustler. I'm a legit entrepreneur. I sell things. What do you do? I come in contact with people all the time. What's your I job? Have to stay safe. I didn't have a choice but to trust the vaccine. Because if you live the type of lifestyle that I live, doing what? Out here in these streets, what? I'm hustling, an entrepreneur. Wait like a minute. Me, why not do it safely? So I want. If you're out here in these streets, hustling, why not do it safely? What is your job? What job description is, quote, out here in these streets? This is, this is from the Arkansas Department of Health. What career is described as, I'm, quote, hustling out here in these streets? They're making them seem like a drug dealer. This is literally saying if you are also a drug dealer, get the vaccine. I mean, that's literally what it's saying. They're going, hey, if you sell drugs, you may not think it's important to get the vaccine, but you should. There is, by the way, there is no attempt to make this guy seem like he has a job (laughs) that anyone would understand as legit. His 
His job description is if you are out here hustling in these streets, selling things and coming into contact with people all the time, get the vaccine. What, may I ask, are you doing in these streets? I mean, let's let's go through this again. I, I can almost not believe this. Start over. Okay. Are you sure we're not being trolled? This is real. Yeah, let's let's just double check here. Because they were playing it before YouTube videos. Yeah, it's, I, I was seeing it played before YouTube videos as ads. So Yeah, and they've turned the comments off. Mm. I wonder why they've done that. And it says right here on YouTube, from state public health authority. So. Jesus, that's crazy. Okay, keep going. This is hilarious. Okay. During the pandemic, my lifestyle drastically changed. My income came to a screeching halt. You have to understand, I'm a hustler. I'm a legit entrepreneur. I sell things. I come in contact with people all the time. I have to stay safe. I didn't have a choice but to trust the vaccine. Because if you live the type of lifestyle that I live, you out here in these streets and you hustling, an entrepreneur like me, why not do it safely? So I want everybody to take this seriously. Take a shot at staying healthy. Take a Get shot. The vaccine. Wouldn't it be funny if he if there was like a gang war at the end? That's the weird. Take a shot. <laughs> like should he even like take a shot just like that with the gun like right to the camera? It seems odd. You ever walk into a bathroom after some of your shit? It fucking bothers you. You look at them like, you dirty fucking bitch, light a candle. <laughs> Get the fuck out of my face.